Today we are going to take a look at the API from Cohere that runs the model command R+. Uh, this has a very interesting integrated web search they call connectors. So I built a little script that's going to show you kind of how this works. And we're going to take a quick look at the update OpenAI did on the GPT-4 Turbo API. I think we're going to try to solve like a lead code problem by just using the image. So we'll see how that goes. So let's just get started. So what really caught my attention on the Cohere model was that they clocked in at 6th place here on the LMC chatbot arena leaderboard so that was very impressive above some of the cloud 4 models above, above mistral large so yeah i think we had to give it a shot so what i did and i just went over to the cohere platform here i signed up you can do that for free so it's very easy to test out here we are going to use the command r plus model so you can try it out for free now you get this free uh, api key so what i wanted to try was actually do this uh, what they call connectors. So basically, I think it's some kind of uh, retrieval augmented generation system. So if you look here, it kind of goes out to the web and search and it kind of brings this in as context. Uh, I think it's using some kind of retrieval here, right? So if you look at the, the Python code here, you can see we make this message here. What is the chemical formula for glucose, right? And we have something called connectors that is actually using this query here to search on the web to bring in more relevant con context. So I thought it was pretty cool that it's kind of built into the model and the API. So we are going to test that out. So let me just head over to the code and I can see you kind of how I set this up. So yeah, this was a pretty easy setup, easy to get going with. So yeah, we just import uh, Cohere, we import uh, .env and OS. We just load our .env file that contains our API key, right? We have this client here that takes our API key. And I created this function called as question that's going to take in kind of the argument uh, is our question and it's going to keep kind of our chat history here. And what I wanted here was to create something I called kind of citations. So these are all the URLs this uh, connector used to kind of find the information from our query, right? So we're just going to do like a simple input here and uh, the user can do an input. And we kind of, uh, yeah, you can call it something like we strip out the URLs we get back from this citation, I've called it. And we're going to print those URLs. And other than that, we're just going to respond right with the message we get back from the Cohere model. And we're just going to run this in a true loop so we can kind of ask these questions over and over again. And we get the response uh, from the chat history. Uh, I think this appends so we actually can kind of keep the context going right so when we ask something we can just follow up with a new question uh, about the same topic i'm going to show you a test of that and yeah that's basically it uh, you can see we store the chat history here in this list here uh, but yeah i was pretty impressed by this to be honest i think it worked pretty good but um, yeah uh, enough of me talking let's just go out and test it and see what we can get back here so let's open the terminal, let's just run this and ask a question. So I want to ask Lina, where is Claude 3 Opus on the leaderboard? Let's say on the LLM Sys Chatbot Arena leaderboard. And hopefully now this will kind of go out to do like a web search through our connector and come up with a good response, but also leave in all the citations that we can go and check, right? If this is a correct answer. So yeah, you can kind of see here, uh, on March 27th, uh, Anthropic Slaughter Opus, large language model, surpassed OpenAI's GPT-4 on the chat leaderboard for the first time. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. We get the ELO rankings. Yeah, that's a very good answer, right? And what I like here is, yeah, you can see we get all these citations here. So if we click on one of these, you can see we get set over here to a Reddit post. Uh, we can try another one, right? We can try, let's try uh, this one. And here we get to actually LMC's org. So yeah, that's very good. I think this is pretty cool, right? Let's try a different query. So let's say I wanted to do some research and find information about the biggest AI conferences in 2024. So let's see what we can get here. I haven't tried this. So yeah, let's see if we can get anything useful here. Okay, so yeah, this was pretty good, right? So you can see here's a list of some of the biggest AI conferences. So we have yeah, some Future Dimension AI Summit in Dubai, and VR GTC, that's already been AI Summit in London, AI Summit in New York, and we get all these uh, citations here. Should we test one out? Let's just try, yeah, let's try this one. I don't know. Let's see if it works. Top 10 Amber conferences you must visit in 2024. Yeah, 
pretty good. So that was cool. So yeah, pretty impressed by this list here. This was neat and tidy and kind of exactly what I was looking for, so perfect. Okay, so the final query I wanted to try is can you give me the most important news in AI the last three days in a bulleted list format? So I thought it could be interesting for some quick research if this actually can give an answer. I haven't tried this again, so let's see what we can find here. Okay, so we got something back here, so you can see here are some of the most important news. Open AI algorithms, voice engine tool, I guess that was last week. Uh, the White House something, Google stopped AI from generating images of people after. That is an old one. Open AI's new video engine tool, Sora, that is also an old one. So yeah, I wouldn't say this is up to date. Amazon invested 2.75 billion into Anthropic. I think that was for some last week, so I wouldn't rely too much on this. But maybe if I prompted it better, we can get a better results. And I like that we can see all the, uh, the uh, citations here, so that's cool. But yeah, I guess this wasn't perfect, but maybe with some prompt tuning this could be working well. But overall, I think this was pretty cool. Just from this simple script here, uh, you can kind of get this very interesting result that we can work more on if we wanted to, right? So I'm definitely going to explore this model more. Uh, again, I'm gonna, just going to put this uh, all these scripts I'm using today. Just follow the link in the description, you can find them on GitHub if you want to try them yourself. So just go check that out in the link in the description. Now let's go take a quick look at the GPT-4 Turbo update. So OpenAI put out this tweet yesterday, majorly improved GPT-4 Turbo model available now in the API and rolling out into ChatGPT. Uh, so majorly improved, that's very vague, right? Uh, but again, I went ahead, I take a look at this platform here, and you can see they kind of updated the GPT-4 Turbo model here. Uh, so now it kind of has GPT-4 Turbo with Vision. I think that's pretty cool. So we can kind of now do everything in one request. Before we had to do it in like, we had this GPT-4 Vision preview, so we had to kind of combine the, the other GPT API call with the Vision preview API call. That was a whole mess. But now we kind of get it into one model here, so I think that's a good update for developers, right? So I think it's pretty cool. So uh, I went ahead, I created a script for this, so let's check it out. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, you can see what we need here. We just load our env file, we put the openai key in our .env, we have the client. Uh, I don't want to do my images from my URL, I want to do it from an image path, so we're gonna encode this into base64, right? And I have this function called ask about image where we take our image path and our question as arguments. And yeah, we're gonna use the new GPT-4 Turbo model, right? And we have the user role, the question is gonna be put in here. And we're gonna feed kind of our URL uh, with our base64 image here. And yeah, so my token to max 1000. I have an image, uh, a function here to just open the image path. So I want to show the image on screen when we ask about it. I set my image path and I open the image. And we have this input where we uh, can ask questions about the image. This is not in a loop, but uh, yeah, we can just start it over again. And it's going to run the ask image function, take the image path, take the question and kind of, yeah, we print the response for that. So let's check it out. Pretty easy setup, but it works, yeah, as intended. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to test was I went over here to lead code and I just took a, like a screenshot of the full, uh, the question here from just a context. You can see, yeah, we have the screenshot of the, the question here, of the problem. And yeah, I just set it to lead.png here. And let's go to a terminal and run this now. And yeah, you can see the image pops up here. And then we can start asking questions about it. So let's go ahead and just do, can you solve the lead code and give me the answer in Python 3 syntax. So let's see if we can actually solve this lead code problem by just putting in the image, asking this query. Hopefully we get a code back. Let's copy it, paste it in and see if it can solve the, the problem. Okay, so we got an answer here. Let me zoom out a bit. Yeah, here's the possible Python solution. So let's copy this, All right? Let's go back here and let's paste it in here. Uh, yeah, let's zoom out a bit and let's run it. So we can see test results down here. Accepted. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so we got all three cases. Uh, I guess that was an easy problem, but still, yeah, that worked pretty good. So I guess it can solve these lead code problems 
uh, just from a screenshot. Okay, so next up, I thought I just gave it an image it hasn't seen before. So I went to paint, I created this masterpiece here. We have a guy on an island here with some tools and some trees. We have some shark in the water, we have a boat on this other island, right? So I screenshotted this image and let's run it now. You can see the image is probably gonna pop up here, right? And let's ask, uh, what can John use on this island to survive? Okay, so this was good. In the image, John is a simple small island surrounded by water and sharks. For survival, John can use these resources. There's a boat. Likely the most practical asset, John, is the boat. We have some trees, source for food, wood for building, sea resources, uh, fishing could be a viable to find food, water, collect rainwater, <laughs> okay. Shelter, using wood from the trees like leaves or stone. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about the tools, but uh, safety from the sharks when using the boat could be crucial, would be crucial. So assessing the best times to travel. Possibly when sharks are less active would be helpful. <laughs> okay, so that was pretty cool. That was just a fun example I wanted to try out uh, just by drawing this image myself. Uh, so yeah, I think, again, this script works good. I kind of like that OpenAI kind of changed it. So we can kind of just make like uh, everything in like a single call here. So we can kind of do the image URL object here. And we instead of having two different models, we have to call. That's just going to increase the latency right and stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I said, you can find both of the scripts we use today in the link in the description below to my public GitHub. Uh, check it out if you want to. Uh, yeah, bit of a different video today. I got a project plan for Sunday, I think. So we will see about that. But uh, other than that, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you again, oh well, yeah, Sunday.